What's going on, everybody? Welcome on into the Stock Trends channel. It's been a while, but we have a new all time high that was just hit this week in the SP 500. And so we're going to talk about it and talk about what we have going on to finish off the month, which, by the way, as I am recording this video, we are sitting in what is the worst time, historically speaking, to be buying the market, as in, like, if you expect us to go up right now, immediately, the next couple of days. Historically speaking, the end of September is one of the weakest times that we see in the stock market. Just, you know, when you average it out for seasonality over the years, could it be a good dip buy? Hey, actually, the past couple of years, it has been. If you've been buying the dips in September or early October, you've actually fared, dare I say, exceptionally well. Um, and you can even see that just going back to, for example, last year, if you want to go back, we were inside of this like substantial pullback the market had from mid-July, I believe. Yeah, mid-July or end of July into really the end of October. So we saw some declines in the market and then a very, very strong rally after that. You can go back to the year prior, which I, I won't bore you too, too much and go back every year, but the same thing there. Decline in September, late August, September into early October, and then bouncing higher lows and establishing you know some upside after the 2022 bear market uh, bottomed out pretty much at that time. So different story because it what it looked like at the beginning of the month was, okay, here we go. We hit September and then boom, hammered down, pull back, boom, hammered down. And it looked like, okay, we might have a nice pullback for the month. And it kind of just completely reversed and not only completely reversed, just went to a new all-time high. I mean, prior to this on SPY, the all-time high was sitting up here around yeah, 565, give or take. And not only do we, we, we eclipse that, we eclipsed that on Tuesday, eclipsed it again on Wednesday, and then cleared it on Thursday. And then Friday, all we did was back test it. So back tested it and then bounced a bit off of it. We'll see what happens going into next week. But I thought it was worth, you know, at least starting there because, you know, it, we, we, we've been watching the S&P and, and it's been a fun, fun, interesting ride this year as it keeps going higher, higher, higher. You see the same thing on the Dow for the most part as it broke all-time highs. QQQ, you don't see that. That's where you don't. You're not there yet. Although a pretty aggressive, you know, bounce back off the pullback in early September. Aggressive bounce back. I'm looking at, you know, the gap to fill here now as you extend this out, which is from back in uh, July, back in mid-July. That would be up to about 492, 493, give or take on Qs. And then if you can get to that level, you know, your next spot is around 500 bucks and the all-time highs are just about you know, 503 or so, give or take on cues. How about the Russell? What about Russell, the small caps? Let's take a look at that IWM. Kind of a similar look, although it didn't break all-time highs. It's kind of, I want to say, a similar look to QQQ. Uh, this is not an all-time high, by the way. This is just the highs of the year. However, extending and broke over this, uh, I guess you could say, lower high. So you kind of had like what looked like a nice pullback right into high volume. You pulled back again into that same area, but built a higher low. And now potentially putting in a higher high, if the trend continues, one would expect, you know, based off the trend, right, that we may take out this high soon. So that's what I'm watching on the, on the Russell. We'll see what happens on that. Bigger picture though, on IWM, we are not at all time highs. Here's the weekly chart. You know, we're getting there though. Above uh, 225 gets interesting because we start to break above this area in the volume profile. We tried right here, couldn't totally do it. But above that, you know, we could be testing these all-time highs and it's not that far away. It's like 20, 25 bucks away from an all-time high on the Russell, which by the way, would be approximately from here, approximately a 10% push, 10, 11% um, rally from here, which you think, oh, that's probably far off. Not really, but the, the Russell can do it. The Russell in a, in a matter of like two weeks rallied 10%. So off the lows of uh, early September or mid September, I should say. So it can do it from the 11th to the 20th. It rallied or more than that really. From the 11th to the 18th, in about a week, it rallied about 10%. So something to keep in mind in, on the back burner. Now, what about sentiment? Like despite, you know, okay, we know this is not the most bullish time of year for the S&P. Despite that though, how about sentiment? Do people expect that to be the case? Right now, 50.8% bullish, which is pretty good. I mean, that's, that's way above the historical average. You know, and bearish sentiment is also decently below 26.4 or decently below the 31% average we see. And then we have a lot less neutral. So a lot, a lot of people have kind of jumped off the fence from going from last week to this week, have jumped off the fence and picked a side, essentially. 
more bulls than bears, but if they pick the side, actually like pretty much double the amount of bulls than bears as of right now. And I always like to look at what the special question is because you get a sense of where people's heads are at who are, you know, filling out the survey. Which factor is most influencing your six month outlook for stocks, economy and or inflation, monetary policy, interest rates, evaluation. Really people are looking at inflation and saying, seemingly that is coming down. Good news. Fed's cutting rates, probably good for stocks. Bullish. That's kind of what everyone is it, it, based off what we got numbers wise, right? It's what the, it seems like. And, and you add in interest rates there. Boom. A lot less people are talking about valuations and earnings. <laughs> a lot less. So it's more about the economy and rates and, and all that stuff. Now back to, or into fear and greed. We are now into greed, which is not super surprising as the market's at all time highs. But what I think is more so telling is if you look at strength and breadth, this is why we are pushing up nicely on the fear and greed back into the 60s as we were just recently in fear. Because strength showing that a lot of stocks are hitting new 52-week highs, a lot more, I actually worked them at the most percentage-wise of the year, of this year right now. And also not totally there in terms of uh, breadth, like this being the strongest or the, the, the best breadth number we've, we've seen, but it's showing that a lot of stocks are moving up. When this number was lower, it was showing you that actually there's a lot of stocks that were not moving up and moving down or were weaker, relatively speaking, to the you know couple of stocks that were pushing the markets higher. And we kind of saw that in the Russell being relatively weak versus the S&P and all that stuff. That's starting to shift. As you see the Russell with some pretty good, in the past you know week and a half, it's up 10%, right? So some pretty good strength there on the Russell. Now back to the charts. Back to SPY, uh, I just want to pull up what this move was from the lows here to the highs. It's about 6% from low to high on the recent pull, uh, recent pullback to the bounce or the bounce off the, off the pullback from the 6th of September. I guess you could even make the argument for the 11th to the 18th or the 19th when it hit the new all-time high. So something to think about. Going into the end of the year, I guess I'll, I'll start with the next meeting from the Fed. 50, pretty much a 50-50 split on 50 basis point cut, 25 basis point cut. So we're, we're kind of back and forth. Going out to the end of the year, by the by the 18th of December, the market's pricing in about 75 basis points worth of cuts still to come. Two meetings. Do the math. Because they you, you can't do, uh, you can't cut 75 and a half and do whatever that would be, 30 something percent. You can't do that. You have to do it in, in, in 25 or 50s, or you could do a 75, I guess, but there's no reason to really do that. It seems like right now. It seems like we're going to get, as of right now, the, the market's pricing in one of these next two meetings being a 50 basis point cut and the other one being a 25. On the other side, pretty much even odds, like almost 25-25 of two 50s, meaning 100 basis points of cuts still to come indicated by the 23% chance and then the 26% chance meaning 225s or I guess 150, but probably more likely 225s over here with 50 basis points of cuts still to come. So go back a couple of weeks and it was like the market's pricing in, you know, uh, 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 we had three meetings, market was pricing in approximately 100 basis points of cuts. And it seems like we're kind of still in that general camp, even though we got this meeting past us, we had 50 maybe 125, I guess I should go back two months ago. Um, and we had a 50 and now it's like, we got 75 more to come seemingly. How you want to split it up? Is it really that relevant in the grand scheme? I don't think it's that big of a deal, but you know, we got about 47 days or so, 48 days or so to work this next one out for the next meeting. So we'll see where things shake out. Now I want to cover a couple of charts here in, inside of the uh, market because while SPY and all that stuff is cool, there's a lot more to the story. You could say um, one of those places I want to dive into uh, is going to be gold and silver. So let me just go to gold. Let me clear the chart so you guys don't have to look at all my, you know, my mess. All right, there you go. So jumping into gold, here's the daily on gold. I mean, this is talk about just boom, curling to the upside. That's why I didn't want to show you guys my mess. But what I really have is, is breakout levels. Boom, boom. And then if I go to the four hour time frame, you can kind of see what I was drawing in here. Boom. It's just like cleaning up, boom, 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 
right to the upside. So very strong chart. Very, very interesting to watch gold. Now, that makes you question, okay, well, here's gold looking really good. Well, what about silver? And I think that's a, that's a good next question because silver has not been as strong, but here's the weekly chart. And I think, okay, cool. You know, it kind of has some similarities to gold, but I think when you go out to the monthly chart, here's where I get a little more interesting. Like, whoa, okay, here we go. Monthly timeframes. And this, 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 this high right here is going back to 2011. So a long time ago, a long time ago. If we start to break out over 3260s, I, I don't think it would be that crazy to think that that silver could make a run into the mid to upper 30s, dare we say 40. And then if gold continues to strength, I mean, a push up into that high wouldn't be that crazy if we get into like that parabolic phase where silver is pushing. Now, this is on a massive scale. We've been talking about this one for a while. It's on a ma We're not talking about next week. We're talking months down the road, but that's what I see based off the, the, the charts right here. It looks quite strong. If you jump down to the dollar, which I think will be a, a pretty big factor in this as well, here's the monthly chart on the dollar. It has now come into an area of support. We've seen it hold this area multiple times. A lot of reasons for the dollar to, to kind of bounce off this level from a technical perspective. However, I guess I can get rid of this blue line because it's kind of like irrelevant for right now. However, go to the weekly time frame, and you start to see that, you know, maybe there's some pressure here, some pressure. Bear, dare we say a bear flag setting up? If this was to break down, I think that that opens the, the floodgates for gold and silver to push, you know, substantially higher. You would think. At the same time, the ten year has also been generally trending down. Now, it had a good week this week. It had had, had a, a strong week, an up week. Based on the weekly time frame, what I'm looking at is saying, get into this box. And then, okay, cool. Now we're looking for this to see if the 10 year has some strength. We're slowly getting there. I think that that's kind of my, my view. It's like the 10 year is trending down. Yes, it's pretty clear we're trending down. Slowly enter the white box. And then if we get a substantial bounce off that, do we break this trend line? Like, you know, how we react there or we, we break down or we break out. You know, that's where my head is at from this guy. And that's again on the, on the bigger time frames. Now, is it surprising that we're seeing, you know, we went from cuts to, oh, maybe there'll be no cuts this year to now there'll be a bunch of cuts. It's not surprising because we watched the 10 year, which tends to be a pretty good uh, you know, leader in that sense of what the Fed's going to do. So if we watch this and this continues to show weakness in the coming weeks and months into the end of the year, yeah, I, I would probably lean more towards the side of going out here, I lean towards like this middle, you know, bar and the left bar. If we get a substantial bounce and the 10 year in the next couple of weeks was just kind of push back up towards that trend line and we'll see what it does at that level, then I think we can, you know, lean towards the middle to the right in terms of, you know, less cuts. So you'll have your answer, I think, by watching the 10 year and how that reacts. Of course, the Fed could do whatever they want to do at the end of the day, but this is where you're going to have a great guide over here. So I think that's a good spot to be big picture. Uh, a couple other things I want to mention that I thought were notable. Bitcoin did have its move back up the past, you know, week or two weeks, but still kind of playing within their, within the channel. Yeah. We had some, you know, some lower wicks in here. It got a little wonky. Yes. But still within the channel and kind of just doing its thing. I mean, you got to break above 69 K at this point in time for me to be interested and say, Whoa, look out. And then I want to see it below 50K to be like, whoa, look out on the downside. So while you stay inside of here, boom, not surprised. However, you, you zoom out in the bigger time frames. And if I get rid of this bottom um, line, which I think will be easier to see on the bigger time frames, go to the weekly. Okay. Go to the monthly. And the monthly looks really, I mean, the monthly looks interesting to me. You know, you obviously have a very strong trend to the upside that we don't we only have so much history on this guy, right? But what I see, you know, personally, everyone sees things differently, right? But I see strong move and I see a multiple month consolidation very much like a bull flag. If we were to break this to the upside with the recent all-time or the prior all-time highs, like right, like... This move, if it breaks to the north of here, which I know a lot of bulls want to see happen, and everyone's like, yeah, tell me it's going to go up. Tell me it's going to go up. It's, <laughs> I'm not sitting here saying it's going to go up. I, I I don't know. You know, I wish I, I mean, 
I, I don't wish I did because it, it that removes the, the fun of the game as the game you play. But I think the potential here would be pretty, pretty nice for a, you know, here's the line, right? Like, yeah, we, we, we broke that barely, but like a clean break above, boom, could be setting the stage for a nice rally that gets you in the ballpark of 85 to 100K. Who knows? In that area, I, I think would be fair for the next extension. But again, we're talking bigger time frames. Like, like I'm not talking about next week. I'm talking, you know, going into the end of the year, into next year, potentially, is kind of the thought process. And then you say, well, what about the election? Well, I, I mean, I'm not here to tell you what's going to happen with the election. You have, you can make your, you know, your guess. You can take a look at the betting odds and say, okay, right now, currently, as I film the video, Trump is the underdog. Harris is the current, you know, favorite, but not by much, by any means. If you know what this means, minus 114 means that you have to bet $100, $100 or sorry, $114 to win $100. And Trump plus 120 means if you bet $120, you win $100. So you're not going to make as much money if you bet Trump than if you, or you were, you'd make more money if you bet Trump than if you were Harris for the same amount of uh, bet. But that's so close to call, really. Like that's so close to call that, I mean, that's like a, a crapshoot there. And then you can also make the arguments, well, he or she is good for X, Y, Z. Yeah, we know that her policies would not necessarily be the best for the stock market. But then again, will they be actually enacted? How serious will they be adjusted? You know, there's so much stuff there that, yes, it's obvious that I think the, as we've talked about in the past, when one candidate over the other one wins, based off what they're saying pre-election, yeah, it makes sense to go, oh, that can't be good for the stock market or for crypto or for this or for that. But we know that that does not mean we have to move in that fashion leading up and around the election. Maybe over time it will play out, but you can get some wonkiness and some volatility in those periods that might not make sense. And I don't think you need to be making sense of it all the time because that will catch you, uh, I think, off guard a lot more than it will work out in your favor when you think about making sense. Hence, why we talk charts, why I look at this chart, I say, hey, election bull crap aside, like I look at this and say, if we start to break out over 70K and we start to break to the north of that channel that we have drawn in here, I think there's a lot of reason to believe that we can get a nice extension to the upside. So we'll see what happens. And on that note, I'm wrapping things up. I'll leave some links and resources down below if you're interested. Trading view, $15 off. Also, if you're looking for a new broker, Interactive Brokers, link in the video description box. Enjoy. I'll see you next time. And leave any chart requests in the comments as always. 